Hi YouTube. I hope you're doing good. I had a pretty good day. I um, smoked a ham. I went out earlier today and uh, sawed off a maple limb and smoked it with, well I got some oak coals going and then I smoked it with maple. So yeah, I'm not really, I don't like ham all that much, but Doug bought it and well, yeah, we still have bills, but things are better because we finally got our mortgage taken care of just a while back here. And that was the, well, the third time this place was paid for. So, because <laughs> of um, home equity loans to get part of the roof fixed, now we got to get the other part of it done. So, yeah, but that's, you know, that's always a good feeling when you pay a bill off, you know, it's like, oh. Like we had a really huge credit card one time and um, got that paid off and that was um, nice because then you have a little more money to apply towards the other bills. <laughs> That's, you know, but um, I hope you're all doing well, like I said, and what you've been up to. <laughs> uh, I have been in pain for, this is the fourth day my knee has been uh going out on me kind of um i cracked both my kneecaps when i was younger and had to have them drained but you know um athletics i don't know if i was running or what i was doing something and um each time and uh but yeah i have osteoarthritis so um they say the weather doesn't play they did a, a swedish uh um lab test or whatever yeah lab rats um but uh they said that it doesn't play a part it, weather does not play a part in arthritis and that's just pure baloney because i know when the barometric pressure goes down and there's more moisture especially cold moisture in our atmosphere i suffer and i don't care what they say because i know better and then i was Oh, just talk about pain it's just kind of ridiculous because Doug's left side is injured and my right side is and he had something fall on me and I had something fall on him and I had something fall on me um I was opening up a door that's on a um uh oh what do you call it excuse me a minute uh our wood cook stove I keep uh, plastic bags in the top of it and so I opened it up and I thought it had it shut and it whipped open and just smacked on my arm with the handle right into it I'm like ah <laughs> and Doug was talking to me I'm like so he thought I was mad but he didn't know that I was injured and I was like rah you know so I'm like, not right now. I can't talk. I just injured myself. <laughs> it was just like right in the wrong spot, if you know what I mean. Just terrible. So, yeah. So it's been kind of cool here. It rained this morning and it rained the day before. And um, I mean, cool by if it's um, below 80 this time of year is cool for us so we've been in like the 70s or even cooler like even like 45 and 50 at night which is um should be at least 60 at night around here so i don't know they say they're covering up the sun well yeah with pollution to me and I've been watching uh, geoengineering since the 90s. Um, I used to walk up to a friend's house about a mile away, and she had internet, and I didn't at that time. And we'd um, follow the chemical trails around the earth. There was a, um, it was called comtrails.com, I do believe, and we would follow them chemical trails to see what they were dumping over us. And I still say that um, our government, just like they let so much pollution from factories go out into our air, I, I believe the same thing with 
aircrafts that they're dumping this stuff on us and it's pollution from factories and that's that's my wholehearted belief i really do believe that so i can't prove it one way or another although i do have a microscope and i have analyzed what they call more gallons which i have and the gestation period of it and um its quirks and um i haven't found a cure uh I think it's a combination of not necessarily just diseases, but also like um, the swine flu shot and different things that they've put out in the environment and stuff. Excuse me a minute. But uh, the best thing that I found, baking soda, if I have anything with sugar in it, then I'll uh, have baking soda. But otherwise, this is a detox. And that's part A, and you mix it with part B, and that them two together, that's a detox, and I detox daily, so, um, which I have supplied, this is half vinegar, actually white vinegar, I'm allergic to citric acid, but there's, um, uh, vinegar is pure acid. This is pool chlorine, 20% pool chlorine, same thing. I mean, unless you're a chemist, I wouldn't go mixing things up, but um, I'm pretty, uh, um, um, what would the words be? I'm pretty confident in my knowledge of chemicals. That I'm not gonna really worry about it I just wanted to get the bottles of it which were kind of spendy to get the proper mixture of it so I can mix it up for myself and not pay 40 bucks a bottle <laughs> so that's just what I did so oh it says 28% but um, it's it's about 20% so no matter what the bottle says <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I do. I take uh, uh, three drops of the chloride and three drops of the acid, and you let it mix for about 30 seconds, and then you add water to it and let that sit for about 30 seconds, mix it, and then drink it, and then drink a full glass of water with it, and that's your detox. So, so like I say, I do that daily. And that helps with, you know, any any toxins like metal poisonings or whatever. Like some of us older ones have uh, heavy metals in our mouth from uh, fillings and all that stuff. And um, uh, which I'm allergic to most in all metals. And I'm allergic to implants. And I wish I could. I had a gold tooth over here because I had got hit and it broke my jaw so hard it smacked it out on that side but I set it back myself and then literally would mush my food for a very long time and it took probably a couple decades and it never really healed well and these three teeth were cracked so um which was a wisdom tooth in the two here well, I had the one removed, but this one kept hurting and hurting, so I had that um, removed. But first, when I had the one removed, first I had a cap put on it with a gold cap or a crown, and um, that was irritating me. I could not figure out why that was hurting every day. Day in, day out, the whole side of my face would swell up. Oh, I'm allergic to gold. Who knew? So, um, um, anyway, uh, I had that taken out and then I had the one next to it taken out too. And then they were talking about implants, which I can't have because I'm allergic to all the materials from that. So there's really nothing I can do about it. You know? So even if all my teeth fell out, I mean, I might be able to wear dentures enough to eat, 
but I wouldn't be able to walk around wearing dentures just out of vanity to smile at people because um, I'm allergic to all that stuff. So I don't know. I really don't know what they can do. It's it's like the shampoo that the Mayo Clinic makes that's hyperallergenic. Not to me it isn't because their own tests says that the stuff they're putting in my shampoo that I bought from them, and that's really expensive. I bought like, um, oh, I think like three of them at a time online. First, I had my pharmacy get one and tried it, and it was better than most of the stuff out there because of the fragrances and all the petroleum products and isolates and um, silicas, and um, there's one other thing that starts with the nest I'm allergic to that they put in shampoos that's really really common and so but uh they have light petroleum in there they have white petroleum and a lot of like lotions and that stuff they have that in there too so yeah so this morning like I said I was out there sawing off that um maple limb and it was getting kind of warm out. I think mostly, too, I went out with sweatpants on, which was kind of stupid because it wasn't really cold out, but it wasn't really hot. But then when I was working, I got a little overheated and couldn't get it off right away because my trimming saw just, I think it needs to be sharpened. It's very old. So I finally came in and I ended up getting just my hand saw. It's like for a miter box, my miter box saw. And... I tried another another trimmer I had, and that was really wobbly. Um, gosh, that was a tough branch. I can, um, Doug was going to saw it off with the chainsaw, and I used chainsaw too, but he was still sleeping. And then when I didn't want to wait for him to get up to go get my grill going to start that ham because I wanted everything done early, you know, so. But after breaking this arm and shoulder, um, just just using it to saw was uh, um, difficult, <laughs> but I got it done. I finally got it done. I had to come back in the house two different times, go back outside just to walk back out there. It's daunting, you know, when you want to get something done and you have to go get another tool because you didn't have it there with you. I never would have thought I needed another one besides the trim. It was only that big around. But it's maple. It's a hardwood and it had a lot of sap in it. And it just didn't want to let go of that tree. It's like, you're killing me. I'm like, no, no, I'm just trimming you. You know, I just need a little smoke for my smoker. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, that was a <coughs> tough deal. Yeah, guy um, putting down women with um, strong looking hands, and I'm thinking, um, wow, he, he never ran into working women then, evidently. Women that can't paint. I mean, when I was a dealer, I would paint my fingernails, but I mean, around here, women do paint my fingernails for, to feed my chicken, you know? <laughs> But I mean, yeah, even like uh, my, uh, well, father-in-law's mother was about five feet tall. And I got her wedding ring set, which her father had made for her, really, really ancient. And I have a size eight finger and she had a size 11. And so like her hands were huge. For a tiny woman, but the thing is, when back in the days when and I I had my own milk cow. When you milk a cow, when you work the land and you're chopping wood, and usually the guys outside would do um, like uh, split the firewood. But a lot of times, like the woman would have a hatchet. Um, I use an axe too, but I mean, I do have a hatchet to split the kindling. Or I split a lot of it with the axe, too. Just uh, Sometimes just for exercise or out of boredom, we'll chop up some wood. We got a log splitter, but, you know, it's just something to do some days. 
I'm not as ambitious as I used to be when I was younger, let's put it that way. <laughs> but still strong. Stronger than most. And yeah, it's important to me because, yeah, if you can't do things for yourself, what are you going to do, you know? Anyway, we got a two-man saw. That, that might come in handy someday. I mean, if there's no gas for the chainsaw, never know. Um, sawed through a log like that. Um, oh, it was like, um, I don't know if it was called Jack and Jill days or Lumberjack days. or And I rolled on a log in the water. And then uh, my brother and I would practice on a 55-gallon drum walking on a barrel. So, and we walked on stilts and all kinds of things, crazy things. <laughs> he had a great big inner tube that was from a tractor, and we would get inside it and roll each other down this um, double hill we had out into the street on a dead end. In a, um, we lived in a, oh, if you know, well, some people know are familiar with the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. I lived in like West Minneapolis, um, out towards uh, a block away from Golden Valley. So, but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, um, we kept active. I mean, I tried even skateboarding down that hill. I was one of the first skaters. In fact, the first skater, my brother and I, around our, our area when I was a kid. Anyway, I had this red skateboard it wasn't really big but it was made by radio flyers so I thought it was really cool so yeah had some accidents <laughs> but so anyway no it wasn't the one with my kneecaps for sure I was running and another time I fell down the stairs right on my knee and gouged it, it had a metal strip on it and gouged a hole about an inch deep in it and um, probably about an inch and a half wide and both my knees have been split open and cut and smacked and really there's not a limb on my body or a bone or a muscle that hasn't been uh, injured you know not as bad as evil can evil but you know not all the breaks I used to not really break it had just hurt you know, so, and kind of, I'm still kind of like that, luckily, even with um, my arthritis isn't as bad as it could be, but, you know, so I just thought I'd get on here and, oh, there's a, the Jamatri jerk, I'm not done with him either, I still have more to say, but he thinks he's going to dirty my name by bringing up anything in my past, I can go for it, buddy, I don't give a shit. You know, so anyway, it's nothing I have done in my life that I'm so ashamed that I can't say, hey, I know I'm a good person, so at least I'm not trying to make money from people by lying to them. In fact, I'm not trying to make money from anybody by telling you the truth either. <laughs> I'm just not trying to make money out here. So, just friends. Or not just, it's very important to me. So, in fact, I was going to call a friend um, this morning. I was too busy yesterday and the day before and the day before. I was literally in too much pain, but I'll get around to it. If you're listening to me, I will call you. <laughs> I still want to get the rest of that story. This friend was telling me a story about um, somebody was going to do something for her and then she had to get up the phone and um, uh, I could call her back and she'd let me know so I still don't know but yeah I know that sounds a little confusing sorry my apologies <laughs> so, anyway but anyway so um, just want to say hi and uh, let the bad guys know that no I'm not going anywhere no I'm not afraid of your bullshit and oh on the note of like uh devils demons satan whatever i do realize that um people can be used 
towards other people in their nightmares and with witchcraft and whatnot and thought and forethought and pre-thought and subliminal and all the rest of that. But I don't necessarily take any credence or heed any of their crap or have any fear of anything like that. As a matter of fact, I always said if I saw Satan to his face, I would drop kick that beep right in his face. I'm serious, a flying drop kick. I'm serious. If not, just like a do a sweep right in front of his face and then come up and go smack, bitch, for everything you have done to me and my family <laughs> and my friends, <laughs> you know. So take that cow sucker <laughs> you know anyway so that's how i feel about that so i'm gonna leave it on that note i love you all thank you for joining me i'll say peace and love from pine city minnesota usa good day good night